Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be looking at the Relative Strength Index or RSI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the Relative Strength Index is something we've talked about a few times on the channel. And one of the things that I, I like about it is it does give you a good idea of whether an asset is overbought or oversold. However, there are some implications of this as assets can remain overbought or oversold for very long periods of time for actually before they actually reverse direction. Okay, so we do need to remember that. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna look at the relative strength index on primarily, I think, three different time frames: so on the daily time frame, on the weekly time frame, and of course on the monthly time frame. With the most recent surge in the price of Bitcoin back above it's 200 day moving average. Of course, it is somewhat um, useful to sort of look at, at where does the daily RSI stand just because we've, we've moved up relatively quickly from around 16K to just over $21,000. And the way you think about the RSI or the way I think a lot of people think about it is if it's below 30, it's technically oversold. And if it's above 70, then it's technically overbought. But again, the, you know, the sort of the definitions of being overbought or oversold they can remain like that for a very long period of time. The first thing I, I think it's worthwhile to look at is when was the last time the RSI on the daily time frame was actually at this level? You'll note that the daily RSI is around 88 to 89. If you were to take a line here and go all the way across, the last time the daily RSI hit this level was back in January of 2021. Now, ultimately we did go higher, but after hitting this level, we actually had a short-term retracement to the tune of 30%. But this is where separating out timeframes, of course, can make a pretty big a pretty big deal, right? It can make a big deal, or it can be a big deal because on daily timeframes, it doesn't necessarily say the same thing as on a weekly timeframe or in a monthly timeframe. So on a daily timeframe, Bitcoin is technically overbought. The last time it was this high was back in January of 2021. Before that though, if you were to continue to take this back, what you'll notice is we also came to these levels back in 2019 as well. And, and you know we, we moved up and then we went sideways for about a month. And by going sideways, it allowed the RSI to actually cool off, okay? Bitcoin hasn't really gone sideways at this point, right? It's just simply been going up. So good chance at some point in the coming weeks, you're going to see the daily RSI come, come down in a material fashion, whether the price goes down or whether we get to some level and go sideways, of course, is, is going to affect the degree, to, the degree at which it goes down. But if you continue to go back further in time, you can see that there are a few times in history where the daily RSI has gone above even where it currently is. Like back in December of 2017 at the blow off top, it was all the way at 94. Okay. Um, and of course, you know, Bitcoin has various, it has gone through various phases where the daily RSI will hit similar levels. Um, here's another one back in November of 2015, right? Pretty, uh, pretty um, similar, you know, parabolic move here in the short term, daily RSI. We did eventually get a pullback. But again, the daily RSI doesn't really tell you the general direction of the trend, right? It, it just shows you what has happened in the very short term and I mean, it can it can help show you probably what you already know, right? And that's Bitcoin is is um, you know getting to these overbought conditions it doesn't mean it can't stay that that way for a little bit longer though. The next thing to look at though is on a longer time frame because you know this channel we more more so care about longer time frames. I'm not really that interested in in shorter term time frames. If you look at the weekly, this is I think a more interesting way to look at the RSI because right because we've seen you know pretty cyclical behavior right fairly cyclical behavior where at major tops you'll see the, the the weekly rsi at levels you know around 90 or so but then at bottoms or near bottoms you'll see it much lower now the rsi can be very misinterpreted okay very, it can be misinterpreted pr quite easily in fact and one of the ways that that is possible and this was actually something we warned about in in the summer if you remember uh, back in you know back in the summer, a lot of people were were calling June the bottom, right? Because the RSI was all the way down here at very similar levels, if not lower than where it was back in you know 2018 and 2014 as well. This was back in June, and this was one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that 
you know, a lot of people looked at this and said that June was the bottom, right? Because the weekly RSI was at fairly oversold conditions. Now, that's not the only reason. There were many other reasons that, that you, you could have given, um, but this was one of the primary reasons. One of the reasons, I, maybe not primary, but it's one of the reasons that, that people might have looked at this and said, well, we're at levels that we haven't seen since, you know, the bear market bottom of December 2018 and the bear market bottom of, of January 2015. Therefore, maybe it's the bottom. The problem is that when you're looking at the RSI, the RSI can actually go higher while price can go lower, right? And we talked about how there was a very similar type of move over here in 2018, where everyone thought that June was the bottom, but in reality, it wasn't, right? We ended up going down and capitulating in December of 2018. This was a mistake that I made back then in 2018 was that thinking that 6K was the bottom, right? I thought 6K was the bottom, and it wasn't. We ended up capitulating in November, December timeframe. And that was sort of the warning we put out again throughout the summer while everyone was, you know, super excited about, about that rally. It was like, well, there's probably going to be another capitulation at the very least, at least one more capitulation. Um, and it, it, it did, in fact, end up occurring uh, in November. So the other thing that I, I think we should look at here on the weekly is you'll notice that, and maybe I can um, zoom this in a little bit. One of the things you'll notice is that the price went down, but the RSI went up, right? So the price went down, the RSI went up. So the price put in a low and a lower low. The RSI put in a high and a higher high. So I think a lot of people learn this lesson the hard way, right? Just because the RSI was at a low level did not mean that June was the bottom, right? We went lower, even though the weekly RSI was actually higher. This is an important thing that I, I, I think, you know, you, you need to recognize about indicators like the relative strength index, because you could even later on, you could get another higher high, but it doesn't necessarily reflect that the price will be a higher low. I mean, it could, but it doesn't always reflect that. And so this is something that I, I you know, you you really have to, uh, watch out for in these bear markets as you'll see sometimes these patterns of a low and then a higher low, um, but it does not always it does not always reflect the same thing on the price chart. And again, I, I do think many people sort of learned this lesson the hard way. It was only only a few months ago that we were calling for a November capitulation, and we in fact got it. RSI didn't put in a lower low, right? It it just simply didn't did not put in a lower low despite the fact the price did. Now, the last time frame that I want to look at is probably the most important time frame, and that's the monthly, okay? Now, the monthly time frame is is you know, probably more useful than any of the others, right? Probably more useful than any of the others because it it more so shows much longer trends in the market, right? So, I mean, same type of deal, same type of deal, right? Mania phases um, that pretty much call the top, right? So if you look at where the RSI on the monthly gets to above 90, right? Top, top, and then again over here in 2017. There was also a, sort of like a, a false one that happened just before it. And then again here in March of 2021, you had yet another top indicating that the market was really overheated. Now, you can also look at it at the bottom end of the spectrum as well. And what I've noticed and what we've talked about is that the bottom here on the monthly RSI historically had bottomed at around that 44 to 45 level. But this time it went lower, right? This time it went lower. And this was another reason, you know, you could have looked at in June to say that that was the bottom because it sort of matched up with what we had previously seen. But when you look at the price chart and compared it to the last cycle, it said something else, right? It said, look, as much as people want November, or as, as much as people want June to be the bottom, history shows us that we could easily go down at the end of the year. And we did, and what happened, right? The monthly RSI put in a lower low. So the weekly RSI put in a higher low, the monthly RSI put in a lower low. So despite the night, the very nice move by Bitcoin that we will not, you know, I'm not, it's not an understatement, right? I mean, it's a very nice move uh, by Bitcoin from all the way down from 15K back up to $21,000. Note that the monthly RSI in November went lower than where it was in June. Okay. Now, if you zoom in here, 
you'll see that the monthly RSI is back up to around 44 to 45. Okay, now what I want to do is draw a line across where it currently is. So where it currently is sits just above this low, and it sits basically at the same level as that one. Bitcoin still has something to prove here, right? It still needs to actually close above these levels and continue higher before it's actually going to show any compelling evidence here on the monthly time frame. Note that in 2015, the monthly RSI basically hugged the lows for two thirds of the year or three fourths of the year, right? Until September, the monthly RSI didn't really go anywhere. In 2019, we were only here for a few months. And what's interesting this time is that despite this move up back to $21,000, we're only at the levels, we're just above the levels that we were at in December 2018. So the thing that I think we have to look out for is can, can Bitcoin, can the monthly RSI actually get above these levels, right? That it was at over here and then over here. I know this was also another trend line that people looked at, right? If you sort of connect this slightly down trend line, we ended up going below it, right? I mean, I know hope people were somewhat hopeful, but we did, in fact, go below it. But if you look at, at sort of this trend line, you really want to see Bitcoin get back above here before you can really start to make a, a more compelling case that the, um, you know, that the recovery is, is well underway. So still some short-term resistance here on the monthly time frame. So what do we know, right? On the daily time frame, Bitcoin's fairly overbought, right? I mean, it's at, again, it's at like what, 90 or 88? 88. 88 to 89. So on the daily time frame, fairly overbought conditions. On the weekly time frame, it's not really overbought, right? It's only at uh, 52 or so. So not really overbought conditions on the weekly time frame. On the daily time frame, yes. On the weekly time frame, pretty, pretty um, in the middle, right? So right in the middle, higher lows on the weekly RSI but lower high or lower lows on the Bitcoin price. And then on the monthly time frame, lower lows from June to November and lower lows on the price. So short term, right? Everyone's everyone's happy, everyone's you know celebrating this recent Bitcoin pump. Um, midterm on the weekly, right? We're sort of in between. On the monthly, we still have a lot to prove, right? Because we've we've seen this rodeo before. Right, where Bitcoin goes up, but there's been several of them so far. They have not continued to resolve to the upside. We'll see what you know. We'll see what transpires over here. One thing I wanted to address is sort of the question of well, how does all of this fit in with a potential recession? Like, are we going to get a recession or not? And how would that affect the most recent local low in November for Bitcoin? Like, is it a major bottom or is it not? I think that the, the best way to think about this from a cyclical point of view, so purely from a cyclical point of view, where Bitcoin has seen major bottoms, you could argue that there is at least some evidence to suggest that that's a significant level, right? The main risk I think that Bitcoin has is just whether we get a recession or not, right? So if Bitcoin avoids a recession, then that makes this a little bit more of an important level. If Bitcoin gets, or if we do get a recession, so if we don't get a recession, this is a more important level. If we do get a recession, then you know it, it will really call into question that level. So again, it's all about whether you think we're heading towards a recession or not. Do you think the United States can avoid it? And you know we're probably going to find out this year, right? We've looked at the yield curve, not to deviate too much from the topic of the of this video. We've looked at the yield curve many times. We looked at the inversion of the yield curve, and you you'll see the inversion of it. But it can take a long time to resolve, right? I mean, you know, if if you're if you're convinced that a recession is coming, which again there is significant amounts of evidence to suggest that it could, it doesn't mean it comes tomorrow, right? The inversion of the of the two year and the, or the yeah the, the two year and the ten year happened in July. History shows us that it takes twelve to eighteen months, oftentimes, before you get a recession from the inversion of the of those two. Twelve to eighteen months. It hasn't even been what, it's been like seven months so far? So yeah, we could have a recession. It probably isn't tomorrow, right? Like the recession, um, you know, the, the, the yield curve is not going to uninvert tomorrow, right? It's not, these things take a long period of time. So while you could inevitably see that play out, it could, it could take a while, right? It, so, sort of like what we had in, um, in 2020. You know, there was a... Um, there was a, a very brief recession over here where Bitcoin sort of retested the lows and, and, and put in a slightly higher low, in fact, 
but it was a long time later, right? I mean, it was from December 2018 until March 2020. So it was more than a year later. So if you're talking about, you know, the inversion of the two year and the 10 year, and I'll do a more dedicated video on this. Um, I mean, that could be as early as, as this summer, but it could also be as late as late this year, early next year. So just something to keep in mind. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. Again, give the video a thumbs up. If you like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.